Hello, psychedelically curious YouTube viewer. You've stumbled upon my channel, which is a channel that provides discussions of the latest perspectives, findings, and developments in psychedelic science in a way that's not superficial, but is accessible at the same time. I'm the host, my name is Manesh, and I'm a neuroscience PhD student doing research related to psychedelics, among other things. In this video, I'm going to be diving into this idea of ego death, or ego dissolution as it's sometimes called. I'm going to be drawing on some perspectives in psychology and neuroscience and also philosophy to give us a sense of what a self or ego really is and what it can mean that it's being dissolved by psychedelics. This idea of ego death or ego dissolution, I'm just going to refer to it as ego dissolution because this is what researchers refer to it as. So this concept of ego dissolution is actually pretty vague. It's kind of unclearly defined in the scientific research and if you look at all the mainstream media articles about it, it's never really precisely defined there either. And the reason being we don't really know what exactly it is, it's this extremely subjective experience. If we look at a paper that was published three years ago that proposed a questionnaire that was aimed at measuring ego dissolution in a scientific context, they describe ego dissolution as quote unquote a reduction in the usually well circumscribed sense of self which is associated with increased feelings of unity with others and the environment. And so while this kind of gives us a sense of what it is, it still, you know, leaves the question, what exactly is our normal, well-circumscribed sense of self? And to give you a sense of how vague this idea of the self is, I want to give you a little quote from a philosopher, Galen Strawson. He made this remark on a paper back in 2000. And basically he listed all the different types of self he's come across so far in the academic literature. So let's just look at this list a little bit. So there's the cognitive self, the conceptual self, the existential self, the narrative self, the rock bottom essential self, the verbal self, you know, and it goes on and on. And it's kind of crazy because obviously there's overlap, there's redundancy, but still it's not even clear what each of these refer to and how they relate. But the good news is that over the years, scientists have converged on two primary aspects of ourself, which I'll argue are the two aspects that are dissolved by psychedelics. So the first one is our so-called minimal or embodied sense of self. And to understand this, let's reflect for a little bit. If you think about it, when you have an experience, you feel like you're having an experience from somewhere. That is, you have a particular perspective on your experience. It's not just that an experience is happening, it's that you're having an experience. And so this minimal or embodied sense of self corresponds to that very fundamental sense of having a first person perspective on the world. And scientists usually view this as related to our sense of being in a body, which kind of makes sense because if you think about it, we usually, you know, obviously associate ourselves with being located within this body and this place in space. And we actually usually identify ourselves as kind of being behind the eyes, like in the head. And so the idea is this minimal sense of being in a body and having a first person perspective corresponds to one fundamental component of our sense of self. And the second one is a bit more complex or high level. It's referred to as our narrative or autobiographical sense of self. Essentially, this is our sense of self that's rooted in our concepts and memories. Basically, it includes our personality traits, who we think we are, our beliefs, our past experiences, our life story, and also our projections into the future on who we might become. It's basically our sense of identity that is continuous in time and that links our past to our present to our future and tells us who we are as distinct from other human beings. And so to link these two together kind of, the idea is more fundamentally we have this minimal or embodied sense of self that we likely share with any other living organism to some degree. It's just a, at the bare bones a differentiation of a subject of experience that has a particular perspective. And then kind of scaffolded on that fundamental self is our narrative self, which adds on that sense of being a distinct perspective and gives us our own life story and traits and characteristics and so on. And so the idea here is how some scientists are now thinking about ego dissolution is that either one or both of these aspects of self are dissolved. I think it's both. You may be wondering at this point, what's the difference between our sense of self and our ego? For all intents and purposes, we can view them as the same thing, and they're often used interchangeably in the academic literature. However, there are some things that are usually associated with the ego that are not strictly included in what I just discussed in relation to sense of self. But this is kind of an advanced topic and a topic for future videos. And so now let's look at how research studies are actually measuring ego dissolution. What's interesting is a lot of these studies that you hear about have actually viewed ego dissolution in terms of just one measure. They ask them to give a rating from one to seven on a particular statement. 
And the statement is, I experienced a disintegration of my sense of self or ego. And again, of course, this is extremely vague and I'm sure everyone interprets it differently. And presumably scientists who administered this in the context of their studies gave very, very specific instructions on how to interpret it. But that's not included in the most of the papers for some reason. But of course, you know, scientists recognize how vague this one question is and how we can't really rely on that to index this complex subjective experience. And so a few years ago, scientists proposed what's called the ego dissolution inventory. Basically, they had a list of questions which are all correlated with each other and which seem to kind of index this aspect of the experience that we refer to as ego dissolution. So if you want, you could quickly pause the video right now and take a look at some of these questions and try to understand them. And basically, if we look at them, the idea is that this experience corresponds on one level to a dissolution of our sense of being distinct from the environment and others. And as I've mentioned, which probably includes both our body and our self-identity, but at the same time kind of corresponds to moving beyond an excessive focus on ourselves and our own issues and concerns. And so again, in the scientific studies now, they give this questionnaire and you rate from one to seven all, all these different things. And that kind of gives you a, a kind of composite measure of ego dissolution. And kind of another way that this similar thing is got at through questionnaires is through the so-called mystical experience questionnaire. And the fact that it's included on this mystical experience questionnaire is because ego dissolution is a core aspect of mystical experience. And if we go back to 1960, the philosopher Walter Stace kind of looked over writings from the mystical traditions across the world and across history and tried to find out what the major components of mystical experiences are. And the core or central component of this was an experience of unity. And this unity could take two forms, internal unity, where you kind of close off from all sense impressions and have this unity of experience of the void or pure awareness within yourself, in which there's no distinctions and no sensory phenomena occurring, or in an external sense of expanding our sense of self to include our environment and our sensory phenomena, becoming so immersed that we also feel this sense of unity and oneness. And of course, we can see how this can relate to ego dissolution, because if you're gonna feel the sense of unity with all things, that means your sense of being an individual is also gone. And of course, there's a lot more to say here, and that's a topic for future videos as well. And so to summarize, we can understand ego dissolution as a dissolving or blurring of two primary aspects of our sense of self. One is our minimal or embodied sense of self, our sense of being a first person perspective that's rooted in this body, in this location in space, and which creates this distinction in our experience of a subject of experience and objects of our experience. The second sense of self is the narrative or autobiographical sense of self, which again is rooted in our concepts and memories of who we are, of our life experience, and who we're going to be. And so psychedelic ego dissolution seems to, at one side, blur a sense of being in a distinct body and creates a sense of merging with our surroundings and also lead us to lose attachment or identification with our stories of who we are and who we've been and so on. And so it, we're just left with this state of unitive consciousness where we're this undifferentiated awareness of all that is occurring without feeling as if we're a distinct person experiencing it. And of course, this is like a totally profound and radical experience that's hard to conceptualize, but it has been reported with strong consistency in a lot of these studies and has been associated with the lasting positive impacts that psychedelics can bring you. All right, so that's pretty much it that I wanted to cover. I hope this has given you some clarity on what ego dissolution exactly is. And of course, there's a lot of remaining questions here. What I'll address in my next video is how ego dissolution might be related to brain processes. And it's really interesting. It's actually maps onto people's subjective experiences fairly well and in an intuitive way that makes sense. So stay tuned for that. And I'll also be diving more into this mystical experience stuff and how this relates to meditation practice and spiritual practice as well. So with that, please leave a comment below on what you thought about this video. And if you have any other additional questions, please hit that subscribe button to support me as well if you haven't already. And I hope to see you soon. Thank <laughs> you.